Hey legends, welcome back. In this episode, I've got something super special. G40 1150 goes on the dyno on a 2JZ with a stock bottom end. So I'll spend the last week sort of tuning it, dialing it in. Bear in mind, I'm trying to keep this conservative so I don't blow a conrod out of the side of the block. Um, the results are in. It's looking really impressive. You're gonna love it. Okay, in Philly's uh, custom dyno cell, what do we got here? S15, 2JZ, G40, 1150. Mm -mm -mm. Obviously all the fruit to support. Big turbo Benny, I'm not too sure if I'm gonna keep running that, but it definitely does its job. So I'll do a, um, a dyno pull now, and you can uh, see what she's putting down. I'm sure. You're gonna love it. Bear in mind, it's relatively conservative because it's a stock bottom end. Super stoked with this output. 800 horsepower in this puppy. You kidding me or what? Um, I'll fire this uh, dyno back up and we'll have a look at some of the data and I'll explain to you sort of what I've done with all the power. <coughs> okay, hopefully you can see this okay, but um, I just wanted to explain a few things about how I've tuned this, uh, uh, the torque out of this engine. So. Obviously, this is the horsepower graph. This is 800 horsepower run. I think it goes to 805. There's a few on here, 814, 815, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we've got the PSI or the boost pressure down the bottom. Now, I've done two sort of tech, I've done one main technique here. Um, and the technique is to not bring all the torque straight away in. So you can see here, I've slowly progressed my boost pressure all the way up to about 28 PSI. Um, I haven't ramped it right up and come straight across. The reason for that is it'll bring too much torque into the midsection here. Um, and when you bring high torque further down uh, the RPM range, that's uh, the sort of danger zone with, I guess, destroying your uh, bottom end. So busting a conrod out of the block, lifting the head, whatever. Um, so what I've done is I've progressively brought the power on. So my main, uh, my max torque comes in around the top of the RPM range. I've lowered the RPM range a bit from 8,000 to 7.5. Um, but uh, um, that's the sort of technique I've gone for. So I've just thrown a little bit of duty cycle in for the wastegate in this midsection and then I've pulled it back off. I'm getting a couple of things here. Um, I'm getting a lot of boost creep with my external wastegate and my manifold setup that I didn't get before when I had a lot of back pressure with the smaller turbo. Now I've got the bigger turbo on, it's given me um, uh, a lot of sort of progressive creeping. So what I've had to do is up at this top section here, I've, with my electronic throttle body, um, I've sort of programmed in about 50, 60 percent um, TPS or 60, uh, 50, 60 percent um, throttle opening. Um, it's 100 all the way through the midsection, but I've just bought a little bit of duty cycle for the mid-range power, nothing too crazy, stuck to a certain amount of power that I wanted. Um, and then I've turned off the duty cycle, so no duty cycle up the top end, and I've also closed my throttle um, to contain this beast. So if you're looking at buying this turbo, this graph here isn't going to represent balls to the wall, full send it. You would have your torque come in, you would have your power come in way a lot higher if I gave it all the boost. It would be like up here, about 950 wheel horsepower, maybe even a thousand if you're lucky. Because um, this is at 28 PSI, 
I can keep on feeding this in and I could destroy my bottom end by just bringing the torque in straight away. Opted to not do that. Another reason why this car set up for full grip. So if I just uh, bring the power on really rapid, it'll just blow the tires off and that's not what I want. So hopefully that explains a little bit. Also, I'll show you uh, on here, this is uh, the power graph. This is the 6266. So um, this color here is the uh, G40. And then this is the Precision 6266. You can see at this top end, I'm at 400% duty cycle. I can't feed any more boost into this thing. This is the power graph, but um, boost is starting to really taper off here. So up in this section, so three, uh, 600 and 680 horsepower was like really the max I could get out of that Precision 6266. Um, as soon as I put this um, G40 on, it just, I had to really contain this thing down. Um, uh, here's your response coming in there. Look, this really isn't much at all. I think there's about 500 RPM for an extreme amount of like top end power. Hands down, this is a much better turbo depending on what you want it for. Still though, the 6266 still put down good power and it come on a little bit sooner. Um, if I jump out of this, oh, there's another thing I've done as well I wanted to show you. So if I get rid of this, um, what I've done for first and second gear, I can't run 800 horsepower. So, and I can't lower my duty cycle anymore um, because I'm sort of getting boost creep and stuff like that. So what I've done is I've opted to do a tune. Where is it? It is here. I've limited it to uh, 600 horsepower. So 200 horsepower less. Um, this is for like first and second gear. And what I'm doing here is I'm just, uh, I've created like a second um, throttle, uh, I guess, throttle map. Um, so this is my normal throttle position map for my um, drive-by-wire. Then I've got a second one on here, secondary for first and second gear. And this limits my uh, throttle opening till about 35% all the way through here. So it gives me, so I can just obviously adjust how much power I want. So without me taking any ignition timing or having traction control or anything like that come in, I'm able to lower my, um, my power output of the car just by using the electronic drive-by-wire throttle body, which is super nice. Um, so that's pretty good. What else have we got? Uh, that's pretty much it, really. If I jump back into here, this is the... Uh, turbo so if we go back into one second let's have a look at the 62 66 and then let's have a look at the 600 horsepower um, throttle body map uh, 62 66 in red um, you can see the crossover too like I could bring up some more um, boost in this midsection here if I wanted to but I'm pretty happy just to leave it the way it is um, but uh, where are we here we're at about 5,000 RPM, uh, maybe 4.9, um, and we're back on the same power band. So if you think about it, with my type of racing, I'm all about grip. So if I've finished a uh, gear and I'm landing back in the next gear, I'm above 4,900. I'm about sort of 5,200. So I'm already back in more power and it can just keep going forever. So super happy with that. Um, yeah. All right, you can see why I'm super stoked with this turbocharger. Um, it's making the power super easy. I'm really containing it. There's no way in hell that I'm doing the full send on this turbo yet. So if you want to um, keep following, I guess, and I'll probably progressively turn this thing up. But what I've got to do, first of all, is take this on the street um, and start doing some uh, street tuning for the chassis to get the grip and get it to really hook. So... Um, Let's see what happens there.